The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is our epistle reading for this past Sunday. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 20. The Apostle Paul wrote, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. This is such a beautiful section, but when Paul says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. But when he says that, there is something very obvious that we need to take from Paul's words. And the very obvious thing that I'm talking about is that there is a battle going on all around us. It's a fierce battle. It's a terrible battle. It's one that began, well, back at the beginning, after God had created all things after Satan and his evil angels rebelled against God. That's when this battle began, and that battle continued when Satan, after he had fallen, after he had been kicked out of heaven, when he went after Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And that battle is one that continues on up until the end of time when Satan just keeps on coming after us trying to get us to fall. And now since Satan's head was crushed, and well, that took place when Jesus was crucified, he crushed Satan's head, he defeated him, he defeated Satan's sin, death, and hell, but, but when Jesus crushed Satan's head, ever since that particular time, it's been Satan's motto, since I'm going to suffer eternal punishment in hell, since I have to go through all this, I want to make sure that as many people as possible end up suffering with me as well. See, now this is an extremely serious battle for Satan. He doesn't go after us half-heartedly. What we'd have to say is that Satan goes after us with both barrels fully loaded, ready to attack us, ready to give us always his worst. That's been his model. And we need to take that threat seriously. And that's why we need to, as Paul says here, be strong in the Lord and, with, and in his mighty power because without the Lord and without his mighty power, we'd fall, we'd fall eternally. 
But Paul wants us to know that God's armor protects us. It'll keep us safe so that we don't have to fall, that we don't have to face eternal punishment. Paul said, put on the full armor of God so that, when you, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Satan has made war on all of us who by the grace of God believe in Jesus. But God gives us this armor, his armor, that will protect us. And let's think of those different pieces of armor. He gives us the belt of truth, the truths of scripture. Those things hold us together. They give us the message of God's grace and love. He gives us the breastplate of righteousness. And there we can think about how God gives us Christ's righteousness, his holiness, so that we can stand before God holy and perfect and ready for heaven because of what Christ has done for us. He also, to protect our feet, he gives us the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And that gospel of peace, what it really does is it enables us to move forward with that gospel of peace, share it with everybody to keep going forward and know that Satan can't get us and he can't really hurt us. He gives us a shield of faith and that shield of faith, such a special, such a special protective tool because Satan will come after us with his flaming temptation arrows and those arrows, they could destroy us but with the shield of faith, we're protected, we're safe and secure. Satan's temptations don't have to get a hold of us. And he gives us the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation, maybe we can think of that as a, a crown, get the glory of God, his, his salvation. Just knowing that we have that certain hope of eternal life. What a comfort that gives to us who who would know that are in our own, we deserve eternal punishment, but because of Christ, we have this helmet of salvation instead. And God also gives us prayer. And prayer, such a wonderful tool that God gives to us because it's better than any cell phone plan we'll ever hear about. With prayer, we don't have to be saying, God, can you hear me now? because we can always rest assured that God hears us, his believing children. We don't have to doubt his hearing us unless, of course, we were to cut him off. Well, God's armor protects us. It keeps us safe and secure. Listen again to what Paul said of that armor. He said, therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the blessed breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation the s and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, Words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. And now, you know, when Paul spoke those words, isn't it significant for us to realize this? He wasn't saying to the Ephesian Christians, let's put on this armor of God and, and see what happens. Maybe we might be able to handle things. No, instead he was saying, let's fight the good fight of faith. 
Let's go onward like Christian soldiers. And with the Lord's help and with old, with, with his strength, what's the case for us is that we cannot possibly be defeated. We can only be winners in Christ because Christ has already won the victory for us. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, help us always to take seriously the threat of Satan's schemes and temptations, but help us also to know our strength in our Savior Jesus, which means we don't have to fear the devil and his schemes. Help us always to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.